Hey folks, my name is Dave Snyder. This is part of my continuing series on teaching Linux customization, working with the Linux desktop. Uh, we started from Arch Linux. We've been building stuff up along the way. Um, last we left off, we had set up a snapshot system using ButterFS and Snapper. And one thing that was apparent to me was I was asking you all to, you know, add a bunch of commands into your uh, uh, terminal, but I had to sort of explain what all of these things did. And that reminded me that uh, maybe we should to go through and just learn a little bit about how you can find information and get help when you're in the command line. Um, specifically, we can look at how manual pages look, and then we can look at some uh, little cheat sheet uh, programs that are out there like TLDR that will allow you to just get the basics whenever you need it. And that's going to help you just navigate around a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So here we are within uh, our terminal. Uh, I brought up the man page here uh, within the Arch Linux uh, wiki. And manuals are essentially just really long manuals that you can see for almost any program that's going to be command line based. Uh, and at the end of the day, what you can kind of do, you know, last episode we were working with a program called Snapper. Uh, and of course you can go and say, you know, Snapper help, and that's gonna give you the basics. Uh, but what if I wanted to learn about Snapper itself? Normally what you do in Linux is say, okay, I want to run Snap uh, manual for Snapper. Now we don't have the manual by default. Uh, and to get those types of things, what you need to do is actually get download the database that has this type of stuff. And so in Arch, you're going to say um, uh, yay dash s man db. Uh, and then if you do this at this point, it's going to give you that man command uh, and you'll be able to get the manual for it. Now, this is going to load in uh, Linux's default pager system. A pager system is essentially uh, just something that allows you to read a multiple page document. Uh, and, and by default, I believe the one that uh, ships with the, the distro that we came with was the less system. And it's really just a way, there's not much to it. Uh, you can hit H on here and it's going to give you some key commands uh, that you can use to navigate around. So for example, I can use, you know, J and K to get here. Um, it, you can use Z and W, I guess, to get things through. But to me, I don't really like learning another system uh, just to uh, figure out how this works. Um, I also really find it hard to read this when it's just using the indentation. It's not using any color. And one way that you can get around this is if you're a NeoVim user or a Vim user or something like that, uh, you can actually use NeoVim to read this type of stuff. I'll show you a couple different ways that you can do it. Uh, one would be, you know, just load NeoVim up uh, and you can actually just say, uh, you know, colon, use the man command within NeoVim, which is default a part of NeoVim. Uh, and then you can, you know, type the program that you want, which is going to give us uh, the manual for Snapper. Now, it's going to load this in a split window because it's going to assume, hey, you were writing code up above and, you know, you needed to reference the manual for some reason. So, you know, this works, but I'd have to then go resize this type of stuff. Uh, one nice thing that's obvious that we can see in here is, oh, it's giving us really nice color coding just by default within NeoVim to do this type of stuff. Um, but I really just want to get back to being able to type man and the command that I want to run when I'm in the command line. Uh, and you can actually do that in NeoVim. Uh, NeoVim. So uh, anytime you're within uh, NeoVim, you can type uh, help and then ask about a command. And I, I was doing this the other day and I noticed um, that uh, the man command within NeoVim had this nugget of advice. Uh, which if we scroll down on here, it's going to say to use NeoVim as a man pager, we can uh, export the variable. And, you know, you're just learning this stuff. You may not know what this means. Uh, but remember when we set up our fish file, which lives in B uh, config fish config uh, dot fish. 
Now, we can edit this file uh, really quickly. Remember, we made an alias for this. Uh, and you can see the alias here that we made that's just called fishy. It's just my way to get to things pretty quick. Um, what we can do is uh, add this export. And we've already got some other exports, you know, that we've been adding in here. We may as well start labeling this stuff correctly. Uh, we can say set GX. Uh, and the, the example that's given above is written out in bash. And so we just need to convert that. It's, it's pretty similar. Uh, we're just going to say man pager. Uh, we don't need the equals. And we just say, okay, we want to run NeoVim plus, uh, looks like what, man, exclamation point. And if we do this and write and close it out, uh, we should be able to, you know, just run, uh, you know, man. Now, it doesn't look like it worked. It just loaded this in the normal man thing. Now, as a reminder, whenever you're editing something uh, within that fish, um, within that fish config, you either need to source it or you need to open a new terminal. So to show that off, let's open a new terminal and now run man snapper. And you can see by the color coding that we're getting, we now, uh, it's just opening directly in NeoVim, which is what we wanted. That's great. Uh, as a reminder, if you wanted to see that uh, happening in the current window where you edited the config, all you need to do is, sorry, not run man. Uh, you need to run source and run against the uh, configuration file again. And source is just saying, hey, run this file. Um, and now at this point, we should be able to say man snapper. And there we go. We get a nice manual page that's going to describe all the crazy settings uh, that we were uh, putting in here before. And even better, we can now use NeoVim uh, to kind of search against the document in the way that we're used to. So there's the create config uh, setting that we used in last episode to see all this kind of stuff working, which is kind of great. Um, other stuff uh, that we could do beyond just those manual pages, because they, they do get weighty. Like who wants to sit there and run the entire command for, for example, the list uh, program. Um, so we run list quite a bit, right? Uh, when we've been within our documents, we you've seen me do uh, both this one quite a bit, and then you've seen me do dash LA. Now, what does LA mean, right? How could I figure out what dash LA means? I could go to that manual, right? And I could type man ls, uh, and you're going to see the parameter for that a means uh, do not ignore entry starting with dot. So that that's the one that's showing our dot files. Uh, and then if we come here uh, and look for the l one, these are all in alphabetical order. We see use a long listing format. So when we're running this stuff, we're actually saying you know we could run these independently. We could say run it uh, in long listing format rather than just this uh, shortened one. Uh, or we could just run A and it's going to give us uh, the, not the long listing format, but it's going to show all those dot files as well. So it's good, you know, great. Uh, but maybe I don't want to read all this stuff. Like, can I just get like a cheat sheet version of it? And you can. There is a, a, a community run uh, set of markdown files that are stored under this TLD pages project. Uh, and specifically what it will do is, you know, when you run a command, uh, it's, you could say TLDR and give it the command name, just like you gave it man. And it's just going to give you like a shortened abbreviated version of what you have that are options there, uh, which I use kind of all the time. Um, and I probably should have included this in a much earlier episode, but it's still good to get it from now. Now, doing this one, you don't install it the same as the other ones. The, this repo is actually just the actual pages themselves. So it's the cheat sheets. If we come in here in the pages directory, we're going to see in Linux land, uh, we could see that there's probably a list command. Man, look at how many commands are down in here. Uh, there's probably going to be like an ls command in here or a list command. Let's see, is it l? Where is l? Uh, well, we can see ls block, right? Which would say like, um, 
you know, telling us about the devices. I think we did this a couple times last one, uh, but it's really all that it is is just a markdown file that people put together. That's a, a small cheat sheet. So if you wanted to make your own or something like that, or you wanted to edit it, you could actually come into this repository and do it. Now to actually use this program within your um, uh, within your terminal, you actually need to install one of the clients for it. And there, there's quite a few clients that are out there. Um, that allow you to get to this type of stuff. Uh, and long story short, the one that I recommend and, and that I think is pretty good is one that's called Teal Deer, <laughs> that's, which is probably my favorite pun uh, ever uh, in uh, Linux land. So if we go to Teal Deer GitHub, you will see uh, that Teal Deal Teal Deer is a uh, really fast implementation of uh, this TLDR concept. Uh, and it's they're saying a teal deer, because if you were just to read TLDR fast, you could say teal deer, which I don't know why I find this hilarious, but I do. Uh, it's nice that it happens to also be a really fast, nice client uh, that we can um, look again. So one thing, you know, probably that I should have also taught you when we were doing package managers was if you ever want to find something, uh, you can pass an extra extra parameter on there uh, with uh, dash S, which will just uh, uh, with the lowercase s, that's going to search for something. So for example, uh, if we wanted to check all the uh, what's available on the Arch user repository that's under TLDR, this is going to give us, you know, a bunch of results against it. That's going to say, okay, there's TLDR page, uh, which apparently is a Go client. There's, you know, these uh, other ones in here. Um, but if we just want to install this one, right, uh, we could do, uh, I don't know why I capitalized the A there. Uh, we could run one for uh, Teal. Let's see if Teal is going to return. Uh, you can see this one here, community TLDR. Uh, is a fast client. So even if we were like, I don't know if it's with a dash or not, you never really know a lot of this stuff. This is one way to find out how to install something like this because sometimes the instructions uh, to install are not, they're not really shown here, right? Because a lot of people aren't going to go to the time to actually put every way to install something like this. So instead, let's go and do, uh, let's go add it. We'll do a uh, teal deer. Uh, and we're going to add this program. Uh, notice too, from our last episode, uh, our snapper snapshots are still running. I'm just going to show this off real quick because I just love that we set it up. Uh, and you can see, okay, it's it's got our uh, change here uh, for teal deer being added. So now that we've added this teal deer system, and I, I won't say it anymore because it, it's almost like a tongue tie. Uh, we can actually come in here and say TLDR LS. Uh, and it's going to say, shoot, you don't have any of this stuff yet. And that's just because we need to actually run the update for it. Uh, so we can either pass dash dash update uh, or we can just pass dash U. And what this is going to do is go and download all these pages that we were looking at, right? There's, there's ones in every single language. Uh, that's out there and not every single language, but uh, quite a bit of them. Now at this point we can say TLDR LS and it's going to give us uh, a bunch of uh, commands that we can do. So long format, list of all lines, sorted by modification date, oldest first. Cool. Let's try it. LS, uh, LTR, uh, what was modified uh, sort of last and you can see the timeline, right? Uh, so. Uh, this just gives us a really, really quick way um, to start editing this stuff and start working with it. So when we were working last time with Snapper, right, uh, we could have typed TLDR Snapper, and this is going to give us like the basic syntax. Now, for something as advanced as Snapper, TLDR may not be enough for you, but at least like it jogs your memory on the way that the parameters work or the configs work or something along those lines. Uh, it also just tends to give you like 
oh, if you want more information, like where can I go to? And this is going to give you like an HTML version. Now, sometimes more information is not going to link to a man page. It's going to link instead to like the documentation for the project. So to me, a lot of times it's just a really easy way to get to the documentation for that project, which is kind of neat. Now, uh, teal deer does come, you know, as you're learning with a configuration file. Uh, so if we come in here and look at uh, the docs that they've got, you can see that there's a configuration file uh, which just uh, needs to be stored in here. And it's going to say, okay, it needs to be in teal deer uh, config.toml. There again is our XDG config home, which for us is going to be uh, config uh, teal deer, which does does not exist yet. Uh, so we would need uh, to go and add one of these. So for example, we could come in and say, okay, uh, I think it's funny, I bet TLDR, can we do TLDR, TLDR? How weird and meta is that, right? Uh, but anyways, we can go in and add this, um, uh, we can add this config file. So let's just make a directory called uh, teal deer. Uh, and then inside that teal deer one, we're going to touch a config.toml file. Uh, and then we're going to edit it. Remember, I've uh, aliased NeoVim to that V key uh, so that we can now jump into here. And it's given us a config example uh, that we have in here, uh, which is okay, we can change it to be a compact view. Personally, I, pr uh, I like this one a lot better. I do not like using the pager. Uh, and we can change the color codes that are on here. And if we wanted to, we could change it to auto update. Um, I probably wouldn't want that one set. I don't mind setting this stuff occasionally myself. So uh, let's give it a shot, see if it uh, works automatically. And it does. So notice that the ones up here were loading um, uh, with the... Uh, loading with some line spaces. And now that we've uh, put it in that compact mode, it's actually just going to give it to us, uh, you know, easily in this way, which is, is great. So now at this point, we should be able to come through and do a, uh, uh, you know, very simple TLDR for almost any program that we're using. What's something that we've been doing a lot? Yay, right? Perfect. You all probably need this one unless you're, you know, been using Linux for a while. Uh, this will let us know like how, for example, like you want to search it, you want to remove the package and all the dependencies, uh, you want to add it in there, you want to update uh, only the AUR packages, you want to update all packages. This is something that we can probably finally do now that we added that snapshot stuff and we have recoveries. Um, so that's a good one. Uh, I think this is really just going to cover it for this one. This, this will be a shorty one. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit. One last thing that I want to do, and I have been doing these just in order, you know, like you've seen everything that I've, uh, that I've done within the system as we've been working through these videos. I did mention, uh, that I wanted to fix, uh, the cursor that we're looking at here. Uh, and I forgot that when we set up Alacrity, um, there was one file that I needed to touch on here. And when we get into the color mode, uh, which is probably down, it's right here. One thing that we, uh, the reason why this one didn't work very well is because uh, the cursor and the text uh, are set to the same color. And that's why we're seeing that problem on here. So you, theme, this is, I would say, a pretty bad theme. We're going to come through, do a full theming episode where all that we do is like re-theme everything. Uh, but really, uh, one recommendation that I would make uh, is that uh, when you do this type of stuff, uh, you want to use your background color as your foreground color. Uh, so uh, if we do that here, uh, and then we change our foreground color to our background color, which in this case it will be our uh, cursor. This should give us the coloring that we want. Uh, did I put the two? Did I actually use the same one? I did. Look at me. Silly Dave. Uh, okay, let's do this a little bit better. 
right? XD, wait, oh, sorry. I'm using my, um, I'm using my, uh, my NeoVim for my host machine. I forgot we haven't set everything up yet. Uh, so background in here, uh, we want to, that's why. There we go, sorry. Uh, you're just watching me uh, type random stuff. So now uh, when we come in here, we now have a better cursor uh, that's working um, and everything's a little bit more readable. Sorry for not setting that earlier, uh, but like I said, I wanna record everything as we go through it. Hope this one helps you out. Uh, I'll see you next episode.